you wish that they knew about you, your generation? You know, I, I would say that I think, and I think they still know this, but that despite our generation's, I would say, maybe intrigue into more, you know, pop culture, or what, I don't know what you want to call it, that we're still at, at the core intellectual, smart, capable individuals. It's just that what's interested to, you know, what's interesting to us has shifted. You know, I always think it's interesting when I talk to my grandmother or something. You know, she can't fathom the fact that we wear jeans to work. You know, a jeans and a button down. And I think it, when, you know, somebody in that generation hears that, it's, you know, are they as hard working? Are they as smart? Are they as capable as us? And I think the answer is yes. It's just in a different way. Very good answer. Um, what is one thing that you wish you would have learned in college? The one thing you wish. Um, I would say, I think it, you know, how to make your money work for you better. Um, and how to manage your finances is something that I've really had. And I was a business major, and I took finance courses. Uh, but I think it's still something that the theory of it and the practice of it are very different. And so I've relied heavily on my family, my peers, to help me make my money work for me and invest smartly. And I feel okay about that because I'm in a position to have these resources to get that information. But it sometimes makes me sad to think that the people who aren't in that position won't ever get, we'll never get that information of how to best invest and make their money work for them. And it's kind of, you know, the rich keep on getting richer for a reason. It's because they have access to the information that the other people don't. And so I think in college, you know, in all various stage, whatever college you go to, I think if those kind of fundamentals were taught better, yeah. it'd be more helpful. Okay. Yeah. Um, Sort of along the same lines, might be the same answer, so if it is, we'll skip it. But yeah. what is the biggest mistake you've made since graduating from college? Uh, hooking up with coworkers? <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, I'm just trying to add a little. I'm just trying to add a little comedy here. Um, We're using that. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> All right, next. <clears throat> uh, do you have a renting nightmare? Any sort of story? I would say a, a nightmare, no, but things that I wish I had done differently, definitely. Um, and I've learned that now that I'm on, you know, past my first lease, that, I, you know, one thing I wish I had known, it's not a one-way negotiation. And I think I thought that when my, on my first lease, that this is the offer and I either take it or I don't. And I think now that I've learned that it's a negotiation, it's a process, it's a two-way bargain agreement, and I think that allows the least let less see you know to have a lot more power than you might think that you had originally and so you know nightmare no I've had pretty good situations but you I think you have to kind of express the power that you have and you have a lot of leverage in that situation yep. okay. um, what is something you did frequently right after college that you're kind of embarrassed to admit oh god that's easy I mean <laughs> probably you know just uh, what is, I mean, drinking fairly frequently, um, and it's a lot harder to do on a, in the corporate world than it is when you have one hour of class to attend. Um, you know, I mean, God, I, I don't know what else I did. I feel like I was pretty well behaved, but um, yeah, I don't know. Alcohol probably. Yeah, that's, that's yeah, like. that'd be my number one, I guess. <laughs> do you have a crazy tale from corporate America that is hard to believe even happened? Wow, a crazy tale. For example, mine would be the Vernon Cried. I do have a crazy tale. Wait, what was yours, Vernon Cried? In front of me, yeah. My crazy tale was that I think I had been working for about six months in my job. Um, very new, fresh, green. And there was a vice president who had been in the company for about 12 years, a dozen years. He was probably about a 35-year-old man. And it was his going away party. And at some point over the course of the night, you know, as a 12-year veteran of the company and a six-month veteran, uh, of the, you know, rookie of the company, we both felt it appropriate to remove our shorts <laughs> and embrace in a shirtless embrace. And I said to myself, is this good that I feel this comfortable with the uh, senior leadership of the company, or is this bad that I'm now shirtless in a bar and I've been with the company for six months? So, you be the judge. I'm still at the same company. So maybe it was a good thing. Yeah. I'm not sure if I should be saying all this stuff. 
Do you have a phone? Did you have to make a phone call to your parents about something related to a real world topic? But now thinking back, you're embarrassed. To oh it. God! I mean, I, I remember I called my mom, you know, asking how long the brownie should be in the oven. <laughs> I've called. I mean, I you know, I've asked. You know, how, how long is salsa still good in the fridge for upon opening? A lot of food-related questions. <laughs> I didn't do a whole lot of cooking in college. I relied on the, uh, the fraternity chef for that. Um, so mostly food-related questions, and I think I look back on them now, four years later, as, you know, wow, I've grown up a little bit. <laughs> so, yeah. Beautiful. Almost done. Okay. Um, do you look at any of your friends and wonder how they graduated from college? I would say most of them, yeah. <laughs> I had a friend the other day, he uh, sent me an email saying that he had just performed surgery on someone that I knew. And I said, I sent him back an email and said, it's pretty wild to me that four years ago, you know, I was in a, in a, in a, in a fraternity house with you, drinking beers and, and, talking, and talking to people, and now you're performing surgery. Uh, and have someone's life in your hands. And it made me, you know, maybe really proud, but also you know, a little scared at the same time. So, yeah, I mean, you know, there's plenty of people that you kind of wonder how they're getting by, but I guess that's why there's a job for everyone, right? If you could give a graduating senior one piece of advice on graduation day, one piece, what would it be? This is going to be, um, I'm not sure if I fully believe this yet, but I would say, because it goes against what I would want someone to tell me a little bit, but I, I was told it, and now I'm glad that I was, which is suck it up. Which is kind of, what I mean by that is, you may not love the first job you're in, but you may be better off if you stick with it to a certain point that allows you to move somewhere else without having to start over. And I say that only because I've seen a lot of my peers who are several years older than me, because they've switched jobs so much, actually they're kind of behind the game a little bit. And I think one thing, even if you're not in love with your job, if you stay to it to a certain point and you're able to maybe perhaps get a promotion, you can move out, you can move to the job that you're more passionate about and be at a better position in the long run. So I don't know if I fully believe that because I didn't want to do that myself, but now that I've done it and I've sucked it up and I've stayed with the company that I'm not in love with, but when I now decide to move elsewhere, I think I'll be able to do so and gain a position for which I'm, I'm better off. I don't know. Do you believe that shit? I do. A little I bit. Think you have to look at what is the one thing that scared you most about the real world once you graduated? So you're like, oh, here, real world, here I come. Oh shit. Yeah. I mean, you know, I think college, you know, is four or five of the most carefree, you know, years of your life, and the responsibilities that you have in college, in hindsight, are extremely small. <laughs> and low risk. And I think when you get in the real world, the responsibilities and the consequences for decisions you make are much greater. And so I think it's, some people are better prepared for that, or better suited for that, others aren't. And so I think it's just the, you know, when you were worried about paying for books in college, it becomes worried about paying for rent in the real world. You know, when you're worried about, um, you know, you know, am I dating the right girl in college becomes, am I marrying the right girl in the real world? You know, I just think the, the, the types of decisions that you're making as you get older, the consequences become so much more impactful. So I think it's just the depth of the, the overall decisions. Yeah. Last question. What are a couple of ways that you make sure you're furthering your personal development? I mean, I think that's, for me, that's surrounding yourself by the right people. Um, I think we're so influenced by our peers and, and family, but as you especially, you know, when you're in the real world or if you're in a city that's away from your family like I am, you know, I think your, your peers become your major source of influence. So I think it's really important to surround yourself by a diverse group of individuals. You know, what I love about my group of friends is that I have some folks who are, in, you know, in the industry. So, you know, you know actors or, you know, you know, I have some folks who are in corporate America. And then, I, you know, you have some folks who are in film or entrepreneurship. And I think you gain a little bit from each one of those individuals, and that just helps you continue to grow and figure out what you want to do with the rest of your life.